gonna show you the technical stuff first, and explain something about kills. Then I will explain Elite Assassin Shy, how I set up my graphics, things I consider before giving PvP a real good try. And why I pick what I do. Maybe it will give you some ideas? These are not optimal settings. BDO is not a designated combative combat game. I love remastered mode. Great for filming some things, can look really cool in RBF but not always. The higher textural contrast of a lower setting, e.g. not remastered, can render better for YouTube, especially if there is a lot of action and motion in the scene. Playing in none remastered can give some higher FPS, but it makes little difference for me as my CPU has now become the bottleneck. I wish PA would separate the render routines from the math and animation frames count, then limit the physics to 60 FPS. That way, if you want to play in a higher mode and you can still hit that 60 frames, then you've not lost anything to the sweats out there with 200 FPS in LEGO mode. It's not as bad as you think. You're skilled right, so if we're all on a level playing field, you can now play your game in nicer setting. You're not forced to play with poo. Render latency, not a lot of people know of this term or get it confused, has nothing to do with the internet. It's the delay between what you are doing on the keyboard or controller and when the result is shown on the screen, or how long it takes before some data packet is rendered on the screen. So you can add render latency and connection latency together for a final number if you want something to measure. Performance wise, lower is better, think of it this way, your ping, your connection latency may be 100 milliseconds, then your render latency may be 30 millisecond. So you are already 100 behind, then another 30 that it took for the data to at the screen, then you press a key, and another 30 before you see the final result of that scenario. This can be where your stutters come from, not expressed so clearly in FPS but render latency. Lowest settings, I call it Lego. Like the plain plastic bricks, can keep this to a minimal. Some even hack in lower settings than that. Personally, I can't play like that. BDO is a beautiful game and if I wanna have super responsive PvP, I will go play a PvP game where everyone is on the same game functional level and not my personal setting giving me an advantage, you will also want to make sure other programs are not running actively or in the background, if they are not needed. Sorry to say but videos and streams cause a lot of FPS drops and render a latency, Chrome is killer. It's not so bad if you have them minimized and are just listening, but I close them all together if I'm PvPing hard, and yes, streamers streaming from their gaming PC, they are at a disadvantage due to render latency, not just FPS. Oh nearly forgot, also turn off auto sort in your inventory. This can cause huge stuttering while active, especially if you have auto potion, if you have a large and cluttered inventory. Take note of the difference with auto sort active and off. You will feel it, full screen can help with FPS. A lot of the time, I don't even use full screen mode, because I have other things I need to do on the other monitor, and it becomes a faff. Nah. If I'm just having some chill PvP, it's not that important. I don't play full tilt all the time, you can still practice, still have fun, still test out ideas without performing at your best. It's a game, have some fun, don't always have to win. Know when you're trying your best and need to improve, because you're not doing so well, and forget what others think of your performance when you're just chilling out. Don't let them go at you into playing sweaty all the time. You will burn out and not have fun PvPing, and then probably perform poorly because you're not having a good time. That's maybe when you need to take a break. Tomorrow is a new day. That's the technical stuff over. So, a kills and such, will also show you my gear, it's not super high end, but it's not bad either. With that said, I have done this with less. As shown in my other videos, so, don't feel you can't give it a try and I know I don't get many kills. Not the style of play I'm going for. I'm not looking for easy kill targets, picking of one person at a time. Nor am I good at 1v1 style combat. Just not my area of expertise, so I won't pretend to know what to tell you. Sounds like copium right? Don't get kills cause I'm not trying to? Okay, if that's what you think, that's okay. Doesn't change what I said and what you wish to believe is up to you. 
I do not get a buzz from picking off targets to get solo kill count, but doesn't mean I can't, and because people will make up their own reality, one that sweets them, I will prove I'm talking fact. Then what then, doubters? The following it a kill targe. See? Do it if I want to, and there are others on my channel. Just this one was done on demand, for this video, cause I wanted to at the time. And because the doubters are not genuine people and only came here to call me out, to call it copium. They aren't gonna say, good game, and now they know I mean what I say and not talking rubbish. Nah, they will call back under their rocks. Keep telling themselves whatever they want, in order to cope. Damn. Full circle much, so yeah. I picking if I'm playing for kills or playing for the team, shame PA doesn't reward team play. So I do it because I get a buzz from it. Just because you don't or can't, doesn't mean I'm the same as you. I'm a very special shy. I'm brilliant and you know it. That's gotta hurt. Wish PA and RBF would reward team play, my style of play a little more, with a record of matches won, not just kills. Maybe they will update RBF in time. It being a team match game and all. PA. Still waiting for you to update this. Nah, I like my group chaos, setup and disruption, support, from buffs to protecting from attacks when I can. Means I will hand a lot of easy kills to other players. It's called teamwork, that is currently not rewarded by PA in any sort of recorded fashion in RBF. Sure I like to get the kills and happens now and again, but I have to make decisions a lot of the time, stay in for the kill, maybe one or two, or deal some damage and back out to support the team, I can't be a team player and a fragger. Maybe you can? I am gonna die a lot doing this style of play. Being the one that makes the push, set up the advantage for the team, becoming a priority target that must be taken out first. Elsa push is coming from my side or their push will be crushed. Unless they have me dead or distracted. Sometimes it goes really well, especially if the team follow up, and I get to back out after my job is done and push again, or go after a special target now the chaos is set up. Such a team normally wins the match, if only it was rewarded in some game-related fashion, PA. Sometimes the team have no idea what to do, and won't listen to direction. This is when I sit out and wait for the match to end, when you know there is no way to win, clear as day. Well if you're upset I'm now sitting out. Why? You know we can't win. Oh. You still want the kill set up. You leech. Nah, I stop setting up kills at that point because it helps weaker players that are kill stealing, and takes the kills from top players. If the match is lost. Let the top players have something from the match, some kills, they can get kills without my help, but without support. They can't sustain and hold point and progress, well that wasn't working out in the first place. So, Elite Assassin Shia, what's this about, what its purpose, what tips do I have? Will you even like this style of combat, I also don't want you to fall into the trap I did over the last few months, looking at top fragging Shia and try to be as good as them. Why? It's not what I enjoy, is not where I shine, and I was just demoralizing myself. Well it was because I felt my style of play was not being valued, not as important, some players understand my style, the veteran rbf -er. Be nice if PA recognized it too. But that has fallen on deaf ears for years now. They addressed it with AOS but still waiting for them to update it in RBF. I feel I can talk on this style of play because I would say I'm very good at it, some are good at getting kills, I'm good at disruption, which I would like to develop into some sub forms over time. I don't come close to some of the top fragging shy out there, but they don't come close to me in regards to team play and disruption, both are cool, both should be achievements to be proud of. And ain't it strange, Shy is meant to be a team player, but she is only reward with fame when she steps out of that role and becomes a kill counter. PA. Why? It's your class you added her. Why haven't you supported it fully in the game? Now let's talk about the functions, the part you came here for. Pushies, a calculated rush into a group of players. You are not trying to int, e.g. get yourself killed, 
You need to debuff and hand out some damage, force them into action, get them to waste their cooldowns, CC if you can, but they may be standing in forward guard, FG, or super armor, SA, stun stiffen and slows if they land. Try and get behind the enemy so they have to turn their back to your team in waiting, hopefully your team see this and step up. And now you can hop back into your team who are now moving forward. The enemy you just pushed will be in fight mode, focused on you. Even as you jump back into your ball, and the enemy will get destroyed by your team's follow up of the push, they still fall for it, if all goes well, you live and do it again, crushes, when the enemy pushes or look like they are about to push, you stand strong and cast debuff, don't move forward much, hold ground. Time FG to block their pokes as they try to CC you. You wanna keep debuffs on them as much as you can. Slow stiffens, anything to keep them unready, you can take the time to look around, see if your team look like they are ready for a push from your side, a switch from crushing to pushing. If not, if they move, cast something impressive looking and with SA. Maybe not bongos, that's old hat, but earth's tremble or sun's fury, especially if the enemy are moving forward unprotected. If you see they are stunned or slow, put in some damage with your main dealer, 1 2 3. This is risky. But if you take away one half their HP before they even get to another team member, just you, one little shy who going to die. Well you softened up the enemies for the kill, and they will get crushed if they don't back down, this now gives you a chance to get back from spawn and back to where you were. You have crushed their push, remembering you are an AP shy, these are not DP shy tactics. You gonna have to FG, SA, iframe and move, you're not a tank. Support, while things seem stagnant, no one is doing anything, or you just need to hold a spot. Keep casting them buffs, keep moving around. Keep an eye out for enemies on the edges and roofs, marking them out with your sprinkle sparkle. If you have a strong setup of roof rats, get up there, keep them buffed, stun incoming enemies and move on to the next. Don't go in for the kills, you? You stop the enemy and hand the kills to your teammates. Why? Well in the time it takes you to maybe get a kill. You could have stopped two or three more enemies and had your team kill them as well. So yeah, you can get one kill for yourself, or lots for the team and hold a position, assassin, assassination is the fun part. You can push for a targeted kill, or hide in the chaos and take out a target, first push. You have to run the front line, into the enemy ball. Not get CC and take out a priority target. Hard work. Good fun. Cause, well, it gives this style spice, a more controlled method is. If there has been a push. And you survived. Now things are chaotic. Heal up buff up and go back into the fight to take out a priory target, so, that's, push. Wait for team to follow up. Go back into your ball and buff up. Then charge out after a designated target. One you should have had UI on even before the push started. Plan it out, think and practice. It's not easy, you will die a lot while learning, but it's something to master. And when you do, you can tell that player is worried, but even then. If the team can't work with you, don't know this method. And how well it works for them too, e.g. free kills. It's gonna fail a lot of the time. That's RBF. Team are RNG and there is nothing you can do about it. Pushes, crushes, and support. Basically means no kills for you. And free kills for your team. So, it's frustrating when they fail to do their job. This is why you wanna learn some assassin play, to liven it up. Keep you sane. Also make you feared on the battlefield, make other players uneasy when they see you are near, make a name for yourself, wait. What? 14 minutes of video for that. Yeah. Cause it's not some simple PvP mechanics of, see red, press kill skill and collect. You're a shy, and shy has some really cool possibilities, but they need explaining. If you can get past the low kill count of this method and not care that others are getting more, then it's very satisfying, it's proper shy stuff.